Okay, thank you for introduction. My name is Tomáš Pohanka, and today I would like to talk about Open Map Tiles project. Uh, I hope that this presentation will be useful uh, for newcomers, but also for those who work with Open Map Tiles regularly. So, firstly, I would like to talk some uh, some something about the history and uh, the new new things in the latest release, and of course, some uh, future future development and future vision. So, uh, briefly about uh, Open Map Tiles. The Open Map Tiles is open source multi-platform tool for setting up custom styled word maps. Uh, whole project is on GitHub, and it uh, it it have its own uh, web page, openmaptiles.org. So the main main uh, focus of uh, Open Map Tiles is to convert OpenStreetMap database into vector tiles. Of course, you can you can uh, convert any of your data to vector tiles using Open Map Tiles project. The whole project is fully dockerized. So from downloading the data for, uh, from, uh, for example, Geofabric or BB Bike, uh, to import data and, of course, to generate vector tiles. Uh, the whole project is built to, to be easy to maintain what feature will be imported to database to, uh, to uh, be part of the vector tiles. And of course, uh, vector tiles in, in its base is uh, fully customizable map styles for, uh, for the, the clients. The Open Map Tiles project is running almost six years. Uh, it has a uh, high, uh, very high active community, or active, <laughs> active community, and it's maintained uh, by Map Tile team. Uh, the main purpose of Open Map Tiles is to, uh, is to have the general purpose map, but as I mentioned before, it's it's uh, easy or straightforward to customize what feature you want to have in the vector tiles, and it's fully customizable. The originate idea was to have the whole planet in vector tiles on 64 gigabyte flash drive, but it, it, it is almost six years, so now the, full, uh, the whole planet, up to Zoom 14, uh, uh, it, it has approximately 93 uh, gigabytes for whole planet of vector tiles. Uh, who use open map tiles? Uh, statistics say that almost 350 million people see or interact with open map tiles maps or generated by open map tile schema. Of course, MapTile and many other companies. There is also some open data implementation for example, uh, Open Zoom Stack from, from Great Britain or uh, Swistopo Vector Tiles uh, Web. Uh, in MapTile, we offer uh, in cloud uh, the hosting service for open, open Map Tiles, where you can use vector or raster tiles or also static map. And of course, there is a platform for map styling. There is also uh, service for uh, download the pre-generated packages with the weekly updates. So, how to even start with with uh, Open Map Tiles? As I mentioned before, it's multi-platform, so you can use any operating system, but the Linux is the the base test operating system. Then you need uh, Docker Compose and uh, to be able to running make targets. Then after you download the repository from GitHub, you can just run quick start uh, shell and 
at the end you have your own vector data in one MB tiles. Or you can run each step manually. Uh, the open map tiles uh, have two main repositories. It's open map tiles, which contains the schema. The schema defines what features from OpenStreetMap database will be imported to, to the database and define uh, the, what feature will be on which zoom level. From the main OpenMap tiles uh, repository, uh, you are calling uh, through the make targets the OpenMap tiles tools. The tools repository contains the Docker images like database, uh, static data, or the import tools, and of course tools for generating tiles. In the OpenMap tiles uh, main repository with the schema, there is two main setup files, the OpenMap tiles, YAML, and .env file. In the OpenMap tiles, YAML, uh, you defined which layers will be included in vector tiles or some embitized metadata as uh, description or attribution. And of course, a list of languages for your multi-language map. In, in the .env file, there is basically the embitized properties like what minimum and maximum zoom level will be generated or the PostgreSQL uh, number of threads or connection string. As I mentioned before, you can run the whole stack like step by step, it's six simple steps. The first one uh, oh, oh, uh, is to download the, the, the data. You can, you can download just some area, for, for, for example, for Italy. The second step is import the static, da the static data. It's, uh, it's mo more or less static, but uh, the import data includes the nature earth data or the OSM water polygons for oceans. The third step, sorry, <laughs> is import OSM data. So it, it looks into the open map tiles YAML file, which you define which layers will be included and then import these features into the Postgre database. The fourth step is uh, optional, and you can download the languages from uh, Wikidata. The fifth step is import SQL, which, which define the, uh, which pre-process uh, pre the data, for example, merging lines and for waterways, for example. And the last, the sixth step, is generate tiles in the end, you have uh, one, one file with, with the tiles. So what's new in the uh, latest release? Uh, it was released in, in May this year, and between version 3.12 and 3.13, it was merged 125 pull requests with a lot of, lot of changes. The main, like the main idea for 3.13 is or was the better roadmaps. So uh, there was at uh, Expressway Tech, for example, or Toll Tech, or uh, you can style the path with no public access, or uh, big thanks to Brian from OSM Americana, who pushing very hard to concurrent roads labels. So, for example, around for Florence, there is uh, highway A1, but also E35. So one, one highway has two marks. Uh, labels for motorway junctions, or you can style the network's labels based on network tech. Or uh, name, name for ship face. Uh, the, uh, there is also many others, others uh, improvements. For example, you can use customer units for mountain peaks in basically in USA. You can default by default using feet for height of the mountain, or uh, 
there is addition for more topographic information, precision of waterways with switch from nature earth to OSM data, or adding some uh, new tags. And uh, one of, of the big change is that we used Paul Norman uh, OSM border importing the administrative borders, but now it's direct, uh, imported directly from the uh, PBF and in the import OSM step. There was also some, some uh, major update in tools and there was uh, speed and stability improvements, of course, some version, uh, new versions of packages or uh, append mode for import OSM step. So you can now import two separate areas into one database and then generate or propagate variables directly through the main or root open map tiles YAML file. And what will be in new version 3.14? Uh, one of the uh, nice change is new version of Nature Earth in version 5, so three years of updates and bug fixing and new additions of IDs for Nature Earth, so this is very nice. Some new tags and in tools there is upgrade to Postgre 14 with PostGIS 3.2. There is also, I don't know if it clearly visible in, in, uh, on the screen, but uh, there is improvement of land cover, so you can see more greener, for example, this is uh, Slovenia, more greener areas on, on higher zoom levels, upper zoom levels. There is also a big, uh, big improvement on land use for residential areas, where uh, maybe you can see around the city Brno, there is, uh, the Brno is much more nicer group, aggregate, the land use are, uh, the, yes, land use area, the residential areas, and maybe you can see uh, the smaller villages in, in, in the empty space, but is, if it's not good visible, please uh, look on the into the repository there is these pictures too. And what is in work in progress? Uh, it is the default open map tile style directly in the open map tiles repository, which this style will be bind with the schema changes. So you can see your change or addition tag directly in this default default open map tiles style, which will be generated together with, automatically generated with the tiles. Of course, uh, I have to thank the community because last year uh, uh, contributing was, was huge and, and of course very uh, improved whole open map tiles for everybody. So Brian, Yuri, and many other st stable contributors in, in, in open models, but there are many more. This is just one for one, one year. So, uh, some roadmap for the future. Uh, the open models uh, should be more the catalog of layers. So, you will choose which layer you would like to include in your vector tiles and and uh, you just generate your, your idea of, of uh, what you would like to, to see in the vector tiles. Uh, better, better precision of geometry, basically in Zoom 14, 15, uh, increase the, it, it is nicely see on the buildings that there is no, uh, there could be a gaps and Zoom 15 and uh, more precision geometry is one of the goal. Of course, faster generating and real-time real -time updates for, from the OpenStreetMap directly. 
Uh, for the last, last slide, I would like to invite Petr Přidal, who is the founder of, of Open Map Tiles and Map Tile Company. Yeah, we have some announcement a bit. Uh, could you give me the next slide, please? Um, we are talking to OpenStreetMap Foundation, and uh, the Open Map Tiles project uh, is considered to be, to be a, a hot candidate for becoming an official OpenStreetMap vector tile um, schema and, uh, and technology to be used uh, with the different rangers. This also means that the project will be more pushed into the open governance and what you have seen on the roadmap before uh, the, the, the move from uh, we are generating a base map into we are all working together on a catalog of layers of everything what is available in OpenStreetMap so you can pick your own subset and generate vector tiles the way you want. Um, this is part of that. So the project will be improved in the direction technically and uh, it will also be significantly improved in the opening of the governance of the project because until this moment, uh, we have been uh, doing the releases in MapTiler and uh, this is now going to be pushed into community. So uh, there is going to be more decision process on uh, accepting pull requests relating to the switch to the catalog. Uh, we are also considering with this switch uh, the move from uh, CC BY to CC0 to boost further the cooperation of the different companies and people working on the catalog of layers. And uh, we <laughs> hope uh, that, uh, that uh, this, is, uh, this is something what will uh, uh, even further push the project and also be good for the people and for the entire community out there. Uh, and uh, and uh, we will all, it's going to be much easier to generate the base maps. It's going to be much easier to, and faster to generate them and, and use them over also for business purposes, for academical purposes, without additional attribution, without, um, without any kind of uh, locking to a single company. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully this means that we are doing good and, uh, and the project moves on forward. Uh, in, a, in a more positive way, and there is many years to come on open map tiles. Yeah, um, maybe the last, uh, last thing is, if you are keen to learn on, the, on how to exactly generate the open map tiles currently with the existing stable stack, there has been a, a workshop recorded on the last Phos4G, it's on YouTube completely, so, so it's I think altogether about an hour. Uh, of like uh, step by step, uh, what to do on the Open Map Tiles tools, so you can look it up on on YouTube, and uh, there is code on GitHub as well. Okay. So, thank you for your attention. <laughs>